On the monster thing, I do want to point something out here. The mantra thing? The, the monster thing. Oh, monster and thing. The, and the point is that, have you noticed in your dreams, the monsters in your dreams are terrifying, but they look a certain, they look a certain way typically. They look a certain way typically. And the way they look is that there's a theory called threat simulation, which is merely fancy word for saying that dreams is a way of exposing you to the terrifying situations and see how you survive in them. Mm. In other words, if you go around and if you're if you're walking in a landscape and you jump over a river and you're running away from a, a serial killer or a sable-toothed tiger or something like that and you survive that scenario, you're more likely to face situations like that in your real life and survive. The brain is never wasteful. Your brain is never redundant. Your brain doesn't want to waste energies and resources. So it's using that time to build new circuitry in the brain, plastically rewire your brain so you don't have to go out and chase that, 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 you know, that lion or run away from that lion, mm. you are more, you have already have the circuits laid down while you are uh, dreaming. So that effect, effectively one view. Your, your, your point is, is also um, similarly, uh, and it's related, it's valid, that you are, you're learning how to cope emotionally with other, other people. So dreams are hyper-social and one social and they're hyper-emotional as well. And they tend to be more negative and negative we have more negative social encounters in dreams. Yeah, why that is means that? that's important because your brain goes, look, for me, Baland, to be having a chit chat with a, a girl in the, in my dream is gonna be less important for my survival than having this 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 fight with a a a serial killer and escaping that. Which one is more likely to help you survive? Well, the emotional interaction with the girl can be important too. You learn skills. But it's it's skewed and biased towards more negative interaction because your brain is always trying to help you survive. Even if it's far less realistic, like the first one with the girl could be very realistic to something you're dealing with with a girl in real life. That's right now. that is true. But the brain in dreams are dreams are generally not very realistic. It tries to use the more extreme examples to be more evocative. And that's the whole point. But does it use extreme examples of like symbolism that mm -hmm. doesn't make sense while the examples are actually very real things? They make emotionally sense. That's the point. I think they do make emotional sense. So even though in your dreams, the thing is with dreams, you can have your dream. You can be in your bedroom. You can be in this apartment here and it will feel like a, it will feel like a, it will be a palace. It will literally be transformed into a palace but it still feels like your own room. You don't yes. question it. And that's the whole point of dream. The fact that you can have this moon and the stars prostrate in front of you, but it feels normal in the dream. And that's because somehow logic, logic is turned off, but emotion is hyperactivated. So we don't, we don't find it bizarre, bizarre and ab uh, abstract. And that's a key point. Emotionally, you, 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 you cope with the experience and you learn from it. And so that's why, yeah, that's why the whole, that's why we can even, even though it's bizarre and strange, the whole serial killer attacking you and you're trying to run away. And by the way, the serial killer has three heads. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still, it, it can teach you something about emotional coping in a similar emotionally evocative scenario. On the monster thing, I do want to point something out here. The mantra thing? The, the monster thing. Oh, monster and thing. The, and the point is that, have you noticed in your dreams, the monsters in your dreams are terrifying, but they look a certain, they look a certain way typically. They look a certain way typically, and the way they look is that the monster has to be terrifying, but not that terrifying that they are not on. They can't be remembered. There has to be some level of terror. But if it becomes, if it instead of three heads has like hundred heads, it wouldn't work. I don't. I'm not going to say that's never happened. I'll mm -hmm. say this, and now fucking tonight I'll dream about monster. But <laughs> I don't really have the monster mm -hmm. come into my dreams ever. Yep. The only so the only type of dream that involves like me running for my life from death usually involves like a vehicle or something like that, like yep. a car is driving at yep. me or the plane's going down. I'm like, well, fuck, and then like you'll wake up and you're like, <laughs> you know, like almost you were falling from the sky. But a lot of things that are like the monster are the threat of something happening. Yeah. Like, do you ever sit with people and like break down their dreams? And like what, what uh, it means? Yeah, I do get those often. People ask me often about their dreams. And do, can you figure out like how it taught, like sometimes when they're describing it, like how it makes sense from yeah, a try, brain standpoint? I try to interpret it differently. I try. 
Yeah. I try. Because like, I, you know, I'm not a scientist, but I'm always trying to do that because there will be some sort of theme that is the hypothetical monster. It's not a real monster, but it's like a threat in the real world. And yeah. even if sometimes it'll be called something different and it's yeah. not like a actual thing, but yeah. it's directly parallel to something that I'm like, oh, I was just talking about that with someone and what a danger that is or yeah, yeah. or that kind of thing as if it's almost like, man, I should hit that again or, yeah. you know, because I also have a show too. So I cover topics sometimes of things yeah. that are like a problem, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if I don't know if that's like related to what I do and I'm always thinking about this stuff, but it it's it's more of a I describe it less like someone holding a gun to your head mm -hmm. and more like you watching a movie yeah. of a gun to someone else's head and, yeah. and watching it go off. Yeah. It's more like that. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. I agree. It has that. It has that um, unpredictability unpredict about it, and it's 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 fleeting. Um, but again, it's it's the, the neurons firing a certain way, the chemicals being in a certain in a certain yeah. state, and things like that. I want to. I want to also touch uh, touch on the whole. You said the psychedelics and all that. Because I didn't yeah, know. you're reading my mind. Yeah, you in my head right now? Yeah, yeah, I did. God damn it! <laughs> Put a fucking neuron on me or something. So. Why do dreams have this kind of bizarre, strange, eerie feel to them? Why do they kind of remind you of the psychedelic state? You might ask that. And the reason is simple. The mystical aspect of dreams and the highly sort of personalized cosmic aspect of, of dreams is that, this is a theory, of course, but it's, it's very plausible. I remember I talked about serotonin being shutting down in REM sleep and therefore in dreams not being absent, not being absent in, in, in dreams, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, when, 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 when serotonin overall shuts down, often what you can find is that other receptors for serotonin might go up all of a sudden. And this is a feature of the brain. You shut down one receptor or one fa family of neurons or chemicals and a, it might find another way to come back online. So, there's a receptor called a serotonin 2A receptor, okay? Fancy word for, for the ghost receptor in the brain. This is literally the ghost receptor, meaning that when you take psychedelics, when you take psilocybin, LSD, all these drugs, you will titillate and tickle these serotonin 2A receptors, and in effect, the world feels mysterious. It feels, say everything becomes salient. This water becomes salient, this becomes salient, it becomes imbued with meaning, mm. okay? Now, in dreams, we think that because serotonin shuts down, these receptors, these serotonin 2A receptors might actually get a boost. And that might explain why dreams have this mystical, overall airy quality to them. Simply for that reason. It's quite interesting, but it, it might explain it. It might explain it. The fact that you have these serotonin 2 receptors suddenly coming alive. So it makes you, if I'm understanding that correctly, it makes everything feel like it has a spirit to it and like yeah, it's, it's, it's existing. It's not just atoms. Yeah. It's again another layer to all the brain components. I told you, this is another layer. Besides things being bizarre, strange and flying, you know, things flying all over the place, there's also a mystical and almost spiritual layer to it. And that's, that's the serotonin 2A receptor that you can also artificially take by using drugs. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.